In this video, I wanna show you how to import your Airtable data into Rowy. So first, let's just start a new project and then I'll show you the Airtable base that we're gonna be importing. So let's create a new collection. We'll call it products and leave everything else as default. Now we can come over here to import data and come over to Airtable right here. So you can see we need two things. We need the API key and the table URL. So let's go over to Airtable and take a look at what we're gonna be importing. So I've got a projects base right here, and you can see we just got a bunch of different field types and data in here that we wanna import. So the first thing we need is an API key. So just come over to the top right here and go into your account, and there are two ways you can get your API keys. The easiest way is to just come down here. I already have generated my API key, so I just have it right here, so I'm gonna grab this. The other way you can do it is in this new feature, you can do personal access tokens. This allows you to be more specific about permissions for whatever service is, is going to be using Airtable. This is more for when you're building apps that are going to be continually communicating with Airtable and not just doing an import once or twice. So let's just grab this API key, copy it, bring it over, paste it in. And then this is just the bare URL. If you have multiple bases, make sure you have the base active that you want to import because that'll change the URL structure. Let's paste it in and continue. So here you can see all the fields that we have set up in Airtable and you can select which ones you want imported. And you can see when you select an item from Airtable over here, we're gonna see how it's going to map on to Rowie over here. So it's recognized that this is a new column because we just set up a new project. If this were an existing project, we could map these to columns that already exist. So here it's recognizing that it's a new column. So we're gonna want all of these, so let's just select them all. Down here, you can either use Airtable's record ID. That is, that's the unique ID that every record, every row has in Airtable to identify it uniquely or have Rowie auto-generate one. We'll just keep this one and continue. Next, we're gonna set the column types. So here, it's showing us this contact phone, which is this one over here. It's saying that it thinks it's a short text. Well, no, we want that to be a field type phone, so you can just select it here, and now it's set. So then you can click through each column and make sure it's set to what we want. Let's look over at status, and here we have of type single select, and so let's set that. Next, we have priority, and if we see over here, we have these rating stars, so we can set that as rating. As we go, you can scroll down and see a preview of the data that we're on. Then we have percentage. It's recognized that correctly. Email, URL. Now we come to assets over here. So let's look at what this is. So down here, assets is an attachment field. So we've uploaded an image in here. Rowe wants to import it as JSON. And that's because when it's sending the data through the API, this will be a JSON object. Okay, well, what does that matter? Well, that just means that we're gonna get reference data. You can see down here, the structure of the object with information about that image, its height, its width, where it's being stored, but we won't actually get the image itself. And this is because transferring large amounts of image data can be very time consuming, but I'm gonna show you a way to do it so your image is actually stored in Rowy. Okay, next we have a date time object, that's correct. A name, that's that first column right here, that's correct. And a multi-select, and that looks good. So we can continue. Finally, we get an overview of how our Rowy database is gonna look. That looks great and we'll finish. And now it will upload our data. Awesome, so that's it. Now you've got all that Airtable data in here. But now let's get those images in. And it's very simple. So let's just scroll to the end here and we're gonna add a column and we're just gonna call it image. And it's going to be a derivative field type. And that's because we wanna run some code in order to get those images. Now, listener fields don't really matter for us right now because we're just gonna bulk run this code on all of our data. But what this is saying is that it's going to listen to whatever column you set here and whenever it changes, it'll run this code. So we're just gonna click one here and the output field type is going to be an image. Great. Now let's come in here and write our code. Let's open it up full screen. So what are we gonna wanna do here? Well, what we wanna do is we wanna look at that JSON object and let's take a look at that for a second here. Let's just update this and we'll deploy that later. And let's just take a look at this. 
and we can see the structure here. And what we wanna get is a URL right down here so that we can tell Rowie to, hey, go get the image at this URL and upload it. So that is, it's in the assets column under URL. That's what we wanna grab. Okay, so let's go back into our derivative column. And so let's get that URL. So we're just gonna say const file equals wait rowy and these are and here are some helper functions that we have access to storage dot upload dot url because we're giving rowy a url not the actual data itself and so where is it well we've got this nice row object right here that we can access so we say row dot and then you can see here is all of our columns and its assets and it was the zeroth item, and finally, URL. Great, and then finally, remember we set the column return type to image, so we just need to return that file. Great, so let's get out of here. Let's update our field. We're gonna deploy it. This is just deploying a cloud function in Firebase that's going to actually be running our code in the back end. Great, so that's deployed, and now we just have to run it. So if you come in here to the column settings, you can evaluate all and run the code on every record that we have. Let's evaluate it, and there they are. Now, what happens if we change the data in Airtable, say, delete a row here, and add in another one. What's gonna happen? Well, let's test it out. So if you've already imported into project or added data, you can come over here to this import data button and do the same thing. So let's grab those, continue. Let's say we just want that name field and finish. And you can see we have four items. The original three we imported are still there and now we just have this desk record. And that makes sense because this is data importing, not data, syncing. So if you need to import data, but your Airtable project has changed, you don't have to worry about deleting records. Okay, great, but what about updating? Now, let's say we come over here, and instead of computers, we wanna call it laptops. What's gonna happen now? Well, let's see. Import Airtable. Once again, let's just bring in our name, continue, finish, and you can see that it's been updated. And that's because it's referencing that ID. So it knows that we already imported this field and so we're just updating it. So that's how you get your Airtable data into Rowie. Feel free to leave us any questions you have and we'll see you in the next video.